Fernet, the world's most controversial Amaro. Well, maybe that's a little bit dramatic. It may not be the most controversial Amaro, but there are definitely two camps. There are people who really love it, which I'm already in that camp. And then there are those people who kind of look at it as a rite of passage. But today, we're gonna to show you why you need it in your home bar. My name's Leandro Demon Riva, and this is The Educated Barfly. Skill to stir a spoon? Artistry? Technique? LOL, 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 LOL. So the first cocktail that we're gonna be tackling today is named Follow the White Rabbit, and it is from Whitechapel in San Francisco. That bar is a gin bar that is owned by Martin Kate, who is the genius behind Smuggler's Cove. Uh, it is his gin bar. Everyone should go there as soon as um, restrictions allow. This cocktail was suggested by one of our viewers. Uh, his name is Tyler Kroll. And what's funny about him is that he goes on and on and on in the Discord channel about how much he hates Fernet and then yet was very intrigued by this Fernet cocktail. I'm not sure if he's made it yet or if he's tasted it. And so we're going to do it for him. And just one little disclaimer, you guys, I'm still on this six week alcohol fast. And so uh, we're gonna be having a guest on it to taste the cocktails yet oh. again. That's right. All right. I want to just be like, why can't I be one of those cool bartenders that goes like, 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 whoosh. all right, let's get into it. Like Tom Cruise? Like, well, I, I'm just not that guy. I can't do it. I, I need like, I need to take a uh, flair lessons from Vlad, I think. Okay. And, and slickness lessons from him too, I think. <laughs> all right. First thing we're going to do is cut up an orange. Three quarters of an ounce of orange juice. Three quarters of an ounce of maple syrup. Usually I like to use the B grade maple syrup. I know they changed the designation of maple syrup. So now it's like very, it's like very robust dark amber or something. This is dark amber grade A. I don't really sure where that belongs in the uh, hierarchy of robustness, but I like to use a very maple syrupy maple syrup if I can, that, that makes sense. Half an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters an ounce of Fernet Branca, and two ounces of gin. I'm gonna put some nice clear ice cubes in here. Then we're gonna add, whoa! See, I'm getting a little bit better at it. I'm gonna add some ice into our tin, a good amount of ice. And then we're gonna marry our cocktail in and give it a nice hard shake. And then we're gonna just double strain it into our highball. Fantastic. And then I'm gonna give it a nice orange twist. I think I'm gonna go for a long horse's neck on this one. So we're just gonna go real long around the orange. And we're just gonna feed that in. All right, taster, come on up. All right, now, before we begin, Marius, mm. I know that you're not used to tasting mm -hmm. all of the cocktails, and the last time you tasted a cocktail was a big disappointment. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna do here. It's okay? gonna be the same. Okay. No, no, it's not gonna be the same, because you're going to sip the cocktail. This is uh -huh. how you sip a cocktail. Okay. You're gonna sip the cocktail, you're gonna swish it around your palate a little bit, okay. swallow it, then you're gonna think about it for a second, and you're gonna try and tell me what flavors you taste. Okay. Like, okay. That's all you gotta do, it's super easy. Okay. Just like try and liken it to like, I don't know, this tastes like tobacco smoke, this tastes like citrus, I can get this, I can get that. You've seen me do this a million times. Mm, it, it tastes like orangey cough syrup. You're a disaster at this. <laughs> You're a complete you know, disaster. This, this is what it tastes that like is to me. not at all a very good <laughs> tasting anything. I don't know, but I'm not a taster. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. We got six more weeks of this. No, we, uh, it's gonna be like three weeks more. No? No, four, week, four weeks more. Mm. That's what you get. <laughs> oh my God. It's, I mean, you can't just pick out the flavors at all. 
it, the orange comes out and then whatever the fernet which has like a medicinal kind of like cough syrupy yeah so it's kind of like a medicinal I, it's a little bit mentholated so it's a little bit menthol it has some saffron, saffron in there some mirror in there so i don't know what you get that piston. nice like kind of bracingly bitter finish mm -hmm. but it how is the balance so it just like balance out the, the the maple syrup really well do you get any hints of the maple i didn't syrup? even taste the maple syrup but yeah, it's like a little sweet it's not overly sweet, it's like a little this sweet. This is what I'm working with, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't know. I can't taste it for you guys. Um, I'm take sure my word it's a very it. fantastic drink. Um, it's good, yeah. Yeah, but when you say cough syrup, no, nobody's, you are nobody's like, gonna think that's good. And, and neither is tobacco, which was you suggested, so. <laughs> so <laughs> I think cough syrup is better yeah. than tobacco. Touche. Right? So, uh, <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, this is uh, a drink that Marius did not do any justice to. We've got two more drinks to do today, uh, and he is going to probably he Butcher is going all. to he is going to describe them in the same way. There's nothing that I can do. I'm I'm working with someone who's very stubborn and doesn't want to. I don't know. You <laughs> are oh, behind the camera. <gasps> oh, did you say stubborn? But it's. <laughs> I, I, I can't, like, yeah, it tastes like orange. Okay, so Maris so doesn't have a very developed palate. There's nothing we can do about that. All right, so there it is, guys. Um, drink it if you dare. This is a cocktail video about the best ways to drink Fernet. Mm -hmm. And this is a very, like, charged well, I Amaro don't... that everyone's afraid of. Right. And you, you said it tastes like orange cough syrup. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good cough syrup. Oh, it was a good cough syrup. So, uh, like NyQuil or... I don't know why you keep... Is that the only thing you have here in the US? NyQuil? NyQuil? That's yeah. the only one that comes to mind. Right. I mean, I'm sure there's other ones for yeah. sure. Like, I'm sure Tylenol has one or Advil has one. But then there's NyQuil. That's the that's the one that well, most... It does not taste like you know, NyQuil. It tastes like uh, just, you know, kind of like a... I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's good, but it, I don't know what Fernet tastes like. That's All the right, problem. Guys, you see what we're, what's happening here at the Educated Bar Fly. So if there is anybody else that is in the Los Angeles area that fancies that they have a, you know, a good palate for tasting, mm -hmm. come on by and be the guest taster. You can drink three cocktails, uh, Uber over. Or, what should, uh, it, what, what should it taste like? Huh? What should it taste like? I mean, here's the thing. The balance, the flavors should all balance out. So you get a little bit of the orange, you get a little bit of the maple syrup. Yeah. You know, you've got that, you know, kind of bracing bitterness of the fernet that's kind of playing into the gin. You get the bitiness of the gin. Hopefully you've got a little bit of those botanicals kind of on the back end or maybe on the back palate as you swallow. You can kind of, you know, sort of sense the botanicals of the gin and it's just nicely balanced, very good refreshing cocktail. That's what, uh, that's what I was kind of looking for. Okay, yeah. You know, just sort of picking apart the flavors and trying to get in there. And, uh, I mean, you, but without like too many, you know, you know, glossy generalizations about the flavor profiles, what I was looking for. Right. But I don't know, we've got two more to do today. So maybe you can, uh, maybe, may, we'll see how you react to those ones. Practice right. makes perfect. All right, so there it is, guys. The Follow That White Rabbit from Whitechapel. I don't have a bartender to attach to this lovely creation, so I can't shout anyone out. But if anyone knows who it is, see us in the comments below. So the next cocktail we got going on is called the Midnight Stinger. It's from Sam Ross of Attaboy. Attaboy is uh, the bar that they opened up in the old Milk and Honey space when Milk and Honey went kaput. And Sam Ross is one of their ex-bartenders. Uh, he is fantastic. I think that he's probably responsible for more modern classic cocktails than any other single bartender. I don't know, that's a bold statement, but I think it's true. Uh, if anyone thinks that I'm wrong, you know what to do. Just comment below. First thing we're gonna do is cut up a lemon. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Wait for it, wait for it. Cork pop, that's my favorite part. One ounce of bonded bourbon. And you can really use any bourbon you want, but bonded bourbon is my choice. That's the bon that's what I like. And then the, the robustness of the bourbon sort of stands up to the fernet. And we're just gonna do one ounce of fernet. And then we're just gonna give it a little skosh, as we do. Give it the old lip shake. And you can feel free to just Whip shake that so you don't hear the ice or barely hear the ice. You're gonna get some nice aeration as well when you do that. 
And it's gonna look really nice when we pour it in the glass. Look at that, ooh, really nice. There it is. Top it up with the old pebble. Ooh, yeah. Nice pebble ice right there. That looks sexy. And then we're gonna give it a old mint sprig garnish. Whenever you do a mint sprig garnish, you wanna make sure that you do a very big bushy sprig of mint and you wanna make sure that your mint is very lively. Give it the old slappy poo. Give it the old crushy pants. We're just gonna tuck it in like so and give it a nice bouquet. And what's nice is that Marius is not gonna tell you this because he's terrible at tasting things, but you know, there is uh, some nice kind of menthol flavors inside the fernet that are really gonna come out with this mint here. Mm -hmm. And you wanna put your straw always right by the mint so that when you drink, you're smelling the mint Straight and it's close. informing your taste. There you go, Marius. Do not say, it tastes just like the other one. Is right, it gonna we taste know like that it's one? a very simple cocktail. It's basically a sour with bonded bourbon and with uh, fernet. It's going to taste different because it doesn't have. Uh, actually, this would be nice. Let's let's see if you can describe the differences in flavor. This one has simple syrup as opposed to maple syrup, and then it also has no orange juice. Yeah. Uh, it is not gin. It is bourbon. It is very strong. It's a much stronger bourbon. So give it the old tasty poo. Oh, it put a smile on Marius. It put a smile on Marius's yeah. face. It does, yeah. It, you it, love it, that. You like it. Yeah. You know you like it. I can tell. Well, I was trying to do that like, mm, yeah, look. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He tries to play downplay everything because he's very logical and very Norwegian. I am Norwegian and very logical, uh, but yeah. I can tell by the smile on his face that he really liked it. Don't drink the entire cocktail. No, no. We still have to shoot <clears throat> end screens and stuff. Okay, yeah, so let's get into the flavor profile here. I can taste the bourbon. Right, but the mint is very fresh. Yeah, right? and you, you can, get that you nice can, fresh mint. Smell, and you can yeah. taste the bourbon, right? And then a little bit of the tartness of the lemon juice coming, kind of coming through, but it's like, yeah. the thing is, is that it's three quarters and three quarters. So it's, the lemon juice is gonna be really balanced with the sugar that's mm -hmm. in here. And the sugar is going to make it a little sweeter as opposed to using one ounce of lemon juice, which would be a lot more tart. But you do get that lemon juice, right? I mean, come on, you don't, your palate yeah. isn't no, dead. It's, yeah, <laughs> but it's not like, it's not like overly sour or anything. You get little no, no, tartness it's, and it's, it's, it's balance. It's a it's, balance of it's flavor. It's a little sweet, but it's not super sweet. Okay. I can't tell us the difference between okay, well, there sugar. You go, guys. Mary says it's a little sweet, yeah. but it's not super sweet. Yeah. It's not overly tart, but he kind of sort of maybe tastes the lemon. <laughs> yeah, right, Matt. Uh, he doesn't taste the mint, but he smells the mint. And so yeah. therefore the mint is present. And then you have the bourbon, which he tastes the most. The fernet is very like minty. I think in the in, in itself. itself, yeah. So right. whether so, or not, so yeah. So you do taste the mint then? Why well, or or the fret? I don't know. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have That's it, guys. Right. Yeah. From a professional. Here we go. So there you have it, guys. The Midnight Stinger from Sam Ross. So the next cocktail that we're doing today is called a Harry's Midnight Snack. It was created by a bartender named Harry May Klein at The Varnish, and it is a fantastic nightcap. It is one of my absolute favorite cocktails, and it is really genius in its, in its simplicity. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take an orange disc, two pieces, throw it into our tin, one ounce of heavy cream, one ounce of creme de cacao, and another thing that I love about this cocktail is that it uses Fernet de Branca as the main spirit, one and a half of Fernet. Then we're gonna take a little muddler and we're gonna lightly muddle. We're gonna try and express some of the oil out of the peel. We're gonna muddle the fruit, but try not to get too much of the bitterness of the pith. So just a light muddle. We're gonna add some ice into our tin. And then add our cocktail. Let's give it a nice shake. strain around that orange and you definitely want to double strain here to make sure you don't get any orange pieces. You don't want any pulp in here. I mean, well, I guess if you want a chunky cocktail, then you can do the pulp. I prefer not to have the pulp in here. And the original garnish called for a dehydrated orange wheel, but I don't have a dehydrated orange wheel right now. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna cut this kind of thin. Cut that like that. And we're just gonna put that on the rim of the glass like that. Taster! Chop, chop! Voila! What should I be tasting in this one? You tell me what you taste. I'm not gonna tell you what you should be tasting. That defeats the point of taste. Do I put squeeze the orange? No, that's the thing. That's, a, that's why I don't put wedges. 
Because whenever you put a wedge, everyone wants to squeeze it in there. I guess you could, but you don't need to. Mm. It is there for decoration. Even though I do like a functional garnish, this one's for decoration. Tastes like after eight. Like the cookie? Mm -hmm. Like the mint cookie? Like the, like the chocolate, yeah. After yeah, eight. it's an, it's a mint cookie though. It's like a mint yeah, chocolate cookie. Yeah, a little chocolate, yeah. Right, but do you get any hints of orange in there? Do they have an orange minty after eight? I don't know, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. So I'm assuming you're tasting the cream. The creme de cacao is gonna be really prevalent in that, yeah, right? Yeah, you're tasting the chocolate. What about the fernet? You're getting a, you're getting a little bit of those mentholated yeah, notes now. I'm getting the, the mint. Good. Mint. There. Yeah. Mint chocolate do orange I, cookie. Yeah. Do I taste the orange? I don't know. I'm not sure if I taste the orange actually. It's very like after eight. Really? Interesting. Mm. Hmm. Well, there you guys have it. After eight cookie. With the, with the hint orange. And aren't after eight cookies or like are they cookie? They're more of a chocolate. It's a little chocolate. It's a little chocolate, but it's 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 that thing was like made to end your night, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. It's after eight. It's an after dinner. Thing. It's an after dinner mint. So basically, it's like a after dinner mint that Marius can't taste the orange in. I really think we'd have to have your palate tested though, <laughs> seriously, because there's quite a bit of orange in here. Right, right. And if you can't taste it, it's crazy. I, I don't know. It's very yeah, because it it just reminds me of the after eight. So I don't even think about the orange. So you don't think about anything else. You're just like down a tunnel for after eight. Yeah, just, that's it. Just after eight. Mm. That's it. Just focused on the after eightness of it. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. I don't know what was the really full what flavor do you want from me? I don't know. Uh, analysis here from hmm. Marius, but there you go. To be expected. To be expected, I guess. Uh, there is one thing that I did forget to put on it, though. Solid. It's right here. Is that the garnish is also a little pinch of sea salt. Marius didn't taste it with the sea salt. I even put it on the, the orange a little bit. Now what? Don't drink it all. No, I mean, I'm... We have stuff to shoot with it still. Oh, there he goes. He's swishing it. There you go. There's the wine taster in you. It just tastes more after eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. Uh, I think it's he good, should though. have named it, not Harry's Midnight Snack, but he should have named it the After Eight yeah. Cocktail, yeah. All right, so there you have it, guys, Harry's Midnight Snack. So there you have it, guys, three fantastic cocktails with Fernet. Hopefully this has convinced you that it needs to be behind your home bar. I wanna give you guys a little bit of info on it because I think that understanding a product makes a lot more fans. So Fernet was created in 1845 by a guy named Bernardino Branca, and it was created initially as a medicinal drink to treat cholera in that the herbs that they used, like the, the herbal maceration that they used, helped to stoke an appetite in people who were suffering dehydration. And so up until the 1930s in Italy, it was mainly so, like sold by prescription at your pharmacy or you got it in the hospital. Eventually it hopped the pond over to the United States, which was the last country to use it for medicinal purposes. And they used that marketing as a way to skirt around laws during prohibition so that they could drink alcohol. That being said, according to Brad Thomas Parsons, uh, the one that was sold in the United States was a little bit less proofy than the one that we had in Italy. I'm not sure which version we have today. I think it's probably, I hope it's the more proofy version. Uh, it is made out of 27 different herbs and spices and nobody knows the entire recipe except for the chairman of Fernet Branca himself. The people who work on the individual parts of Fernet only know their individual part that goes into it. So each person is working with just a little bit of knowledge. We do know though that it has um, aloe in it. It has saffron and actually the company claims to be the company that purchases the 17% of the world saffron to make Fernet Branca, which I thought was a pretty interesting thing. That's another one that I got from Brad Thomas Parsons' amazing book, Amaro, which you should go pick up. It is linked below. So it has saffron, it has aloe, it has bitter orange peel, it has mirror. What am I missing? Cardamom. Uh, and that's just some of the elements that sort of make it up. So it has a very strong mentholated flavor. It has very, very strong on the palate and is one, gonna be one of those Amaros that is on the more bitter side. So it's like Campari in that it's gonna be um, a little bit of a acquired taste. It's something that you sort of have to taste over and over again. But once your palate gets used to it, you start to really pick apart a lot of those different flavors and it is fantastic. So I definitely think that if you are somebody who finds it to be very challenging, you should pick up a bottle, you should make these cocktails. So don't be one of those people that are like, wah, 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 I don't like Fernet. Just pick up a bottle. Do what I say, I promise you'll be thanking me later. If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon and YouTube.
YouTube memberships. Check out our website, theeducatedbarfly.com for articles, reviews, merch, and our virtual bottle. Bot and our, I was gonna say virtual bottle and it came out virtual pottle. I don't know what a pottle is, but it's our virtual bottle program, which puts you in part of the action. So if you guys wanna be part of our show, you can do it that way. And I'll see you guys another time. Leandro, out.